Welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Rates. I'll be your host, and this podcast exists to help you improve your communication skills, whether you communicate one-on-one to a team, from a stage, or from behind a screen. We know that when we improve our communication skills as leaders, it exponentially changes everything. It improves our relationships, it improves our leadership skills, and it improves our business skills. So let's get ready to dive into this next episode. Well, how do you turn your passion into a successful business? How do you take your gift? And if your gift is being an artist, and how do you successfully share it with other people online for other people to enjoy? And and really, why should you share your gift? Uh, and then if you do share it, how will that create opportunities for people to enjoy it? Uh, we're talking about all of this today on the Speak With People podcast. I have an incredible guest. I've been looking forward to this for a long time because I have been friends with him for an absolutely long time, and he is a unbelievable human being. I have known him for years, and he is a stand-up leader, incredible communicator, and an artist that will just knock your socks off. I'm going to stop right now, but I'm going to bring him on. But I, I'm so proud to call him a friend. Nicholas Reynolds, thank you so much for being on the Speak With People podcast. Bro, I've been waiting for this opportunity too. Like, like, I, like just even just talking to you, bro, catching up with you on the phone is awesome. But then to be on a pod is even better, bro. So let's, like, I'm ready to chop it up, bro. Let's get I love it. Too. I love it. I love it. Well, I'll never forget. I'll, I'll go back in time here for a second. Uh, I tell a story as a speaker where I bring up a picture of the fifth grade version of myself. I talk about self-worth and image and it's, it's a, it's a baller pick. I mean, I, I, I'm looking, I'm look. I don't know what the kids say today, fly or I don't even know what they say, but I'm looking pretty good. But you, my friend, you took it to the next level. You made a cartoon version out of it and it just like spread like wildfire. All of a sudden we had stickers of it and it was on mugs. <laughs> It was awesome. It was awesome. Well, hey, before we jump into, you know, your work, your art, your your business, your, what you've learned from communicating it and all that kind of stuff, why don't you take uh, people into a little bit of your story? What what kind of brought you to this point? I, mean, I, I would go back to like Little Nick, right? Mm. Um, I always wanted to be an artist. Uh, like I, I always, I remember, my, I remember at one point my goal, like I had, the, and it seemed so distant. Uh, was to sell a piece of art for a hundred dollars. Mm. Like that—that that was a goal at one point. It was like to sell a piece of art for a hundred dollars, and and I and I hit that goal, and I and it felt good. Um, but then even just going back to the nineties and like um like because I'm a nineties baby or nineteen ninety, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> I feel old. People tell me I'm still young, but uh, I remember like <laughs> like adults tell me like there's no money in art, and, and, and during that time like there wasn't like there like I mean there there was, but like. In the '90s, this is like, like dot com era wasn't really like bumping like that. Actually, it hadn't yep. even started to like the 2000s. Like it didn't blow up, so like really there wasn't a lot of money in art. But little did they know that that market was going to open up, and I kept that dream going. Yep. Um. And now the thing is, is, I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to create. And so whether that was uh, at one point I wanted to be an architect, and I went to uh, I didn't go to school for architecture, but I worked at a firm. Uh. Oddly enough, like I was in a drafting class that got me an internship at a firm mm. and I worked there for about like four weeks. And this is prior to going to CMU. Um, no, not four weeks, four months uh, prior to uh, going to CMU. And I remember sitting in a chair and like, like in my head, all I knew about architecture was uh, Mr. Brady from the Brady mm. Bunch. And it was like, okay, <laughs> like this guy's got it. You know, like I, I, I want yep. a house like that, bro. Give me the 12 kids, bro. Like, I, like give me something like that. Um, and uh, I worked at the firm, bro, and every no, nothing's uh, nothing. There aren't any drafting tables, you know. Like everyone's working on AutoCAD, which I yep. knew how to do AutoCAD because of my drafting class. But it was so boring. Mm. It was so boring. The only time they got up was for smoke breaks or to go uh, visit the sites. Um, and I knew immediately this is not the route that I want to take to get here. At some point, I do want to design my own house, um, but. I don't want to go this route. This is boring. It's just coffee breaks and smoke breaks. Or I'm good. <laughs> um, and so um, then CMU comes up, uh, played ball there. And there was almost like this like silent period. I was still drawing and everything, um, nurturing the gift. And I want to say it was my junior year. I was taking a printing class, like t-shirt printing class. It was like a, just a little elective on the side. And I printed a shirt that said "Cool Life Living." Now you know where that's going, 
right? So they say cool life living and I printed it. And then like, I went out like one night, people kept asking, how do I get that shirt? How do I get it? So yep. I'm like, I was like, okay, there's a demand. So I started making other people's shirts. And so that's where that business started. Um, tailgates what happened and like, I would, um, I would have a backpack full of shirts. People have backpacks full of beers. I just had a backpack full of shirts <laughs> and like, uh, just like flipping shirts on St. Patty's day and like, um, at like tailgates and stuff like that. And, um, just making a business out of it. And then it kind of just died down. And like, and like, it was almost like, I, I, I think the best way to describe it is that I felt like I stopped dreaming again. Mm. and I didn't know where to take it. I didn't, I didn't know if I wanted to speak in schools. I, I did. Um, I think at one point you offered me, you, you, you offered me your nonprofit. Yes. Like, you, like literally. And, and, then, and then there was a lawyer who like, cause I did a, a two minute pitch because I was in a business program. I did a two minute pitch and, um, I was trying to raise money to become a nonprofit. And then like, here you are, you offer being nonprofit. And the guy who was in, uh, it was this lawyer in the uh, crowd. He said, Hey, I went to CMU. He said, I'll just, I'll just do it for you for free. Mm. And we were sitting at the, um, what is it? Um, not the student center, not the SAC, but it was the, um, it, it was the, like the main hub at CMU where like, you okay. get like financial aid and stuff like that yeah. in the market. That, and we were sitting there and I had the paper in front of me. It was like, you were signing it over and I just froze. <laughs> and I was just like, man, I don't know if I want to be a nonprofit. Like, is this the route that I want to take? Yep. And um, I, I apologize to the guy for wasting his time. I, I think I reached out to you. I was like, hey, I'm not going to go that route. Um, and I don't even know if I should have or not, but I didn't. And uh, that just left me stuck in Mount Pleasant. Um, I didn't want to go back to Kalamazoo. So I stayed. Mm. And that led to me becoming a youth pastor. Yeah. And I fell in love with, like, nurturing the gifts of youth and building relationships with youth and really a better way to put it would be uh um being the adult that i wish i had mm. being the youth pastor that i wish i had not that my youth pastor was smooth but like i got to be a better version of that i got to take yep. what he gave me and build off of that yep um and then that just turned into its own thing and i'd be i was in youth ministry for uh roughly 10 years mm. i was in youth ministry and um it was a beautiful thing and to be able to nurture their creativity, but then use mine to build them up. Uh, there's this thing called multi-sensory preaching and teaching, which mm. is something that I studied, you know, not just preaching at people, but having that conversation, but then introducing different elements of yep. um, like, you know, well, we're in, like talking about coffee. Well, let me pump the smell of coffee into the room while I talk about it. If yep. we talk about cookies, I'm going to pump the smell of cookies and yep. then even just have milk sitting there. You know, the sound <laughs> of waves, if I talk about the ocean or the sound of thunder, you know, and yep. just like I fell in love with the creativity of that. I'm just a very creative person. And like, I just live it. I breathe it, like everything about me. And, and I believe that the, my definition of creativity is problem solving. Mm. And that, that can go into so many aspects of life because it's not necessarily, Hey, what's the problem? How do we figure it out? But like, I once read this quote, we said, anywhere you see duct tape in the world, there's a business, <laughs> right? Anywhere, yes. you know? And so, um, like wherever, wherever I saw status quo, mm. I considered that duct tape. Yeah. But wherever I saw stagnation, or, or, or in fact, where I saw someone being stagnant mm. in their walk or their life, like to me, it was like, okay, that is a creative problem to solve. Um, or, or I see somebody frustrated with something, or if I'm, uh, well, Bill Hybels, a book that you gave, uh, it was Bill Hybels, he called it a holy discontent, right? Yeah. The holy discontent. Um, and, and, and actually let me use that. I'm going to pause right there. The holy discontent. Yeah. That, that was the feeling that at every time that I felt stagnant or I felt like I stopped dream dreaming, I now understand that as a holy discontent of that was the waiting room right before the elevation to the next level. It was the frustration that caused mm. me to look at my area and just like really just ask, like, do I really want to do this? You know, they do it like just to just project like, you know, yep. like 10 years from now, like, man, like, do I uh, do the, the caricatures like when I drew little Jason? Right. Like that, that was a moment where like, it was lucrative I mean, people wanted it and yeah. I enjoyed it. But then yeah. when I sat back and I asked, do I really want to draw caricatures for people right. for like for, for five more years? So the answer right. is no. So I'm going to scrap that idea. 
And, and I just want to pause there as well, that like some people, they stick with a good thing and they miss out on the great. And you have to listen to the unction that like, um, that, that really just, uh, it was, it's Dr. N.T. Wright. He talks about um, the kingdom of God being like an echo. Uh, and and I'm, I'm butchering it because that guy is so deep. Uh, but it's like a calling out to the soul of like really just a calling of like uh, you ever just look at a sunset and like in like just looking at it and being there just doesn't even feel like it's enough because the moment is so rich. Mm. Uh, that, that's almost like I, I would describe that that is similar to like a calling in life that like where you are does not align with where you're going. It's almost like mm. being like a lion stuck in a cage, mm. you know. Um, and so. There was a moment when I was playing football, and this is before, um, this is before like Cool Life Living took off. I was sitting in line doing O line O line drills, and like you know, just waiting my turn. And it was a beautiful spring. It was a spring. It was a beautiful spring evening. Mm. The sky was like hued with orange and pink, and I was sitting there, and that's when that discontent, that echo, was mm. just called me. Like I remember just thinking, like there has to be more to life. Than like there has to be more to just like, just being on a football team, like that, like it wasn't even something that that was a moment. There was like, man, I really don't, I don't want to go next level. Mm -hmm. Like my knees are shot. Like, do I really want to play? Like, do I really want to like beat up my body for another five years of playing? Right. And I, I asked myself, I said, there has to be more than this. And like, not too long after that is when I quit. It was my, my senior year when I was supposed to start. Oh. And like that, that, that coach, he still to this day don't talk to me. Oh. Um, yeah, like I quit. And, and the thing is, is like looking back, I, I don't regret the decision because had he got a better job offer, he would have left. Right. And so right, I don't yeah. feel it's fair, fair for him to even be upset with me, but I get it. Um, and so that's when I quit, you know, pursue cool life living in like, it, it's amazing how like every single, what, what can be deemed as a failure, they were just stepping stones. Yep. Like I would just learn. And if you go, I have a, another page. It's, it's I underscore C underscore motion. And they may, right now I just post my kids. Um, and, but if you like scroll all the way down, you'll see the journey of my creativity. I, I believe it, it started as me doing graphics. I, uh, I will jump on Fiverr and um, I started doing graphics for church churches mm. all across like, the, uh, like really the globe. Um, and now it's like that, that niche is like flooded. I like to think that I started that. <laughs> um, it's flooded. And I was just doing graphics. And then that was another moment. It was like, man, I really don't want to do this. So I was scrapped. It. It's lucrative, but I scrapped it. Uh, and I would pull clients from there. Then I just started doing graphics for other people. And I wanted to do like a, um, a, a, a creative, um, marketing. We do like creative marketing or like I have a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a creative firm, pretty yeah. much, right? We do graphics, yeah. videos and everything. And I had to ask myself, well, is this really what I want to do? And what it came mm. down to, and they, this went from there to caricatures to like selling artwork that people wanted. It was, it was just a lot of stuff, videography, for photography. I tried every single field and all of these things, they made me more valuable. And looking back, actually, like my assistant now, um, I showed her a video that I made in youth ministry. And um, she was like, is there anything you can't do? And I was like, well, eat tuna. I don't like tuna. <laughs> You know, like that's, that's it. And like, but you know, like to, to her, she was amazed that there yep. were all these things that I can do. And like, it, it almost like, it, it almost sounded like she see, sounded like it was unfair, but mm. little did she know every single thing that I learned came from moments that people would call failure, but I took them as opportunities yep. where I'm going to expose myself to a thing and I'm going to submit myself to a thing and then pretty much allow it to build me where mm. I can learn these things because I, I, I wanted to figure out is this worth doing? Yeah. And then people, uh, I, the, the, the biggest question that I get, the number one question I get is like, what would you tell uh, a creator or either a creator is asking me like, you know, you have any advice for me? I'm just getting started. You know, any advice? I want to start shoes. I want to do this. Um, and my answer is start. Mm. Just start. Like, like, don't, like, don't, like, you're waiting for me to give you an answer that will motivate you. Yep. That's the problem. Yep. Like, and, and I'm not going to do that. Like, yeah. like if, you are curious if there's a curiosity or an unction that you have to try a thing yep. try it yep do it I love because that. you don't know where it's going to lead right like i'm not a photo photographer but i can work a, uh, i can work a camera yeah i have the eye for photography like i'm not a videographer but if i need to record something i'm going to do it yeah. I, 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 uh, whether it's with my phone or it's with i don't have my camera over here but yeah or it's with a camera right you have to submit yourself to to ideas sometimes mm -hmm. Uh, just so that you can simply learn what you need to learn and then move on. Yeah. Like well, not everything is a forever thing. Right.
So where where did the dream then? I mean, you know, for Shoebreaker and what was that first when you took that first step and you started? How was that birth? Did somebody ask you to do something and then it just kind of steamrolled? Because now Shoebreaker, right? I mean, your Instagram page it, don't get, don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's like a hundred thousand plus. Yeah. people i mean that's that's massive it's a lot. I mean, yeah. that's a lot you, you got thousands on your youtube i mean it's it's crazy so this thing has you know you you obviously provided something that people wanted uh, mm -hmm. which super i mean incredibly wise so where did that first that that first dream start it was during lockdown 2020 mm -hmm. um so i was i would use because the the creative stuff was like more of a hobby um, I would use like the extra cash and like just buy shoes and like it was just like you know I'm just gonna stay fresh. I was a youth pastor, so like well let me, you know I'm I, I, I need to I need to look fresh. I need to look good. You know I need to have the cool shoes. Like it it, just, it buys you clout. You know so yep. that I can get close enough to have that like relationship. Um, and I had bought a pair of uh it was triple black fear gods. I had, got a hit. I hit for them on the Nike app. I got those. They cost three hundred dollars. Very mm. comfortable shoes. It came in the mail. My, my goal was I was actually going to flip it. I was trying to see, you know, it, I was actually try, I was trying the idea of um, like reselling shoes. Yeah. And uh, I got them. I put them on. They were very comfortable. And I knew that like there was a highly coveted uh, style of shoe. And I went to stand up very comfortable, bro. Uh, I was proud. And then I realized I had nowhere to go. Mm. It was lockdown. Mm. <laughs> like, like where, where am I about to go? And, and the, even that realization led to the, the uh, thought of like, why did I buy these? I'm literally buying shoes to impress other people. Not mm. only that, but I'm buying shoes that everyone else has. Mm. And so really the, the only people who would be impressed are the people who couldn't afford it or the people who didn't get it on a Nike. Mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if you love shoes, like I, I still have shoes, um, but like my heart is different. And so then I just started, I started seeing people painting shoes online. They would use like Angelus paint and they would paint online. I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, and I'm, and I'm, this is right in that, that waiting period of yeah. like, well, I don't really want to do caricatures anymore. Um, or I don't, I don't want to draw logos or stuff like that anymore. And so I was like, well, let me take everything I learned as far as photography and, uh, design and stuff, and stuff like that. And let me see if I can paint some shoes. And so I got an old pair of Nikes and I started painting shoes and it was cool. And I just went by NDR Creative, which is like like my initials and then creative and um, like that. And that was cool. I think, I mean, I, I actually I got to I grew my page to about 2000s, which is my current personal page now. So you'll see that just bro, go through. It's, it's, it's awesome to look at. Like you just yeah. see like the flow from like graphics to characters. And then it's like shoes. Like who, who is this guy? You know, um, <laughs> and then I had this thought. There's this uh, shoe designer. His name is Shoe Surgeon. So I was like, well, I need a cool name. And so uh, I believe, like, I was like, man, like, well, what about Baker? Like, Shoe Baker. And so, like, I was like, okay, well, let me, I put that in and started at zero. It was Shoe Baker. And the whole concept was that I was going to make shoes that look like baked goods. I was just having fun with it, you know? And then uh... and when I started, now keep in mind, for me, creativity is problem solving. Right. I thought it was a problem that people only use paint. It was like, man, like, well, like, from woodworking, I learned how to use resin. And like resin would be a really cool idea. It would be a, a really sweet idea if I made a shoe look like it was wet, but it really wasn't wet. Nah. And so that sparked the idea. Um, and so then it was like, well, instead it was, I think it was October. I was in my garage and, um, and like, it was like maybe October 15th or something like that. Um, and so I was like, well, if I add uh, red dye to the resin, I can make it look like blood. While everyone else is painting blood on the shoe. I can make the shoe look like there's actually like blood splatter on it. So yeah. I grabbed the black pair of Air Force Ones. I used acrylic paneling um, because I have an engraver. That's another venture where like, I bought an engraver just to buy an engraver. <laughs> it was like, man, like, this is just an idea. You know, it's a paintbrush yep. to me. Got yep. an engraver. I cut like the masking and stuff like that. Learned how to thermal form the acrylic, put it on, and I posted it. Woke up, it went viral. <laughs> and like, and when you go viral, especially around the time that it went viral, like, um, it went viral for a while. Like, you know, and I, I sold some shoes. Like, I, I think I was selling them for like 150 no, no, 250 at that time. Um, I was selling for like 250 and it was like, okay, this is making money. So I'm thinking after Halloween, it's going to stop. Mm -hmm. No, those sales carried on through the next year. Wow. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. I was like, wow, I have a business. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and, and here's the funny story. It's like, it's the same, it, it, it's the same business I had in college. Mm. It's still cool life living. So that's what I mean. It's like, you just have to start. You never know. You, yep. you can't. 
like you know like you know i have to like the older i get the ma- the more mature i get i should say like you you learn to like let go of future possibilities and live in the moment mm. because if you try to like if you try to predict the future like it's okay to set goals but you try to predict the future and you hang on to what you see right um, rather than the why of like of why you want to get there, like then you'll sabotage yourself. Yeah. Because like when I was doing cool life living, the idea of painting on shoes, if you paint on your shoes, people would have laughed at you. Mm. They would have called your shoes fake because that colorway never dropped. Right. But what I started in 2011 is literally what I'm working on in 2024. Mm-hmm. All right, and I can't even tell you how many, like, how that opened up doors because, like, that's an active business account for how long, right? Right, it's like you just have to start. Like, you can't, right. you can't be so bogged down by like what is. So fast forward, the um, shoes go viral, uh, and so I coined the phrase "I bake different," right? <laughs> like that, like it, it wasn't necessarily about like um, painting the best because there are painters out there far greater than me way better it wasn't about being better yeah no one cares about better honestly no one even believes better because how do you even determine better i mean unless there are like numerical ways of like like doing that but when it comes to art art is very subjective so someone can say they're better than me good job you know Mm -hmm. i hope that you think that you're better than me right and like in your craft like you should be right like you you should be confident about yourself yeah but like you you know you can you can drive a billboard that says hey we're not number one we're number two and it's like for plumbing you know like something like that like which is a great phrase that was like an actual <laughs> billboard i've seen before right but like people always say they're number one who cares yep what people want to know is can you get the job done mm. right and then another thing people are looking for is different they want different i've seen this before like like the i've seen this colorway i've seen a red and black colorway before I've seen someone paint flowers on a shoe before. Mm. I've seen someone take a toothbrush, dip it in red paint, and splatter it on a shoe before. Yeah. But have you ever seen a shoe look like it's dripping with blood, but the blood isn't moving? Mm. The blood is still shining. It looks like you just walked out of a murder scene and you have a Jason mask on the back of it. I've never seen that before. It, it intrigues people and it causes them to lean in. And yeah. that is the goal. It's like getting people to lean in. Uh, I'll... I'll as an artist, you, it is an insult for people to ask you why you did it. Mm. But when someone asks you how, that is the greatest compliment that someone can ask you. How did you do that? That means that they are intrigued. They're leaning in. Yeah. I want to know more. And if you want to know more, I can tell you, right? And yeah. in business, that's marketing. You get people intrigued, they lean in, and then you give them a price. And mm. they buy. And so wow. here we are now. Uh, this, so I started in 2020. Um, and it went viral. And then, I mean, if you look at my page, it's just like, I just kept doing different and then also just spamming people. So sometimes I would do something that is just absolutely ridiculous. Like, like I, I learned, cause I used to think that like, you want everybody to love the shoe. No, you want half the people to love it. And you want half the people to hate it because they'll argue in the comments and you just sit back and collect. Right. <laughs> It right. Is awesome. yeah. Wow. So what's, uh, I mean, did, 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 it, did it go to the place where all of a sudden you're, f- you're filling orders all over the country? Did it like spread other parts over the of the world? world? Yeah. All around the world. Um, UK, <laughs> Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I think Tokyo, Tokyo is Japan, uh, Germany. Um, I haven't shipped to Africa. I don't think, um, uh, down South, like Mexico, um, like all over the world, like, and that, that was the first year, like wow. that was the first year it went viral. And yeah. so I was like, oh, this is, this is nuts, bro. Like, you know, like, and I'm like, I'm having, not only am I shipping to people, but I'm like having conversations with people, Australia, yeah. like, wow. like, that, like I'm having conversations with people through DM. Um, yeah. and like, it's just like, it's blowing my mind because keep in mind, my goal was to sell a product for a hundred bucks. Yeah. So imagine, imagine the little boy in me. Like, I like how, how that affirmed the little boy in me, right? Like, you know, like, here, I, you do, I just want to sell something for a hundred bucks and I have people buying my work for 250 plus. And yeah. now, I mean, it's more than that. Like I think the, the, uh, the most I've sold a shoe for is like 5,000. Holy cow. Think about the little boy in me. It's wow. Just like, right. And so like you, you, like that dream, bro, like that, that, um, childlike wonder. Yep. 
is what it is. So when I keep talking about curiosity, and I, I don't think many adults do this enough, like we we don't dream anymore. Like like we we're so like bogged down by the norms of society, and like and what is deemed as uh, as acceptable. Yeah. I don't care less about what's acceptable. Yeah. And, and that's in every aspect of life. Like, because the moment that you realize, that you, okay, think whatever shoes you have on your feet, right? That was someone's dream at one point. Mm. Yeah. The house that you're living in, that was someone's dream at one point. Yeah. At what point do we start pulling ideas out of our own head and manifesting them? Yep. Because that is such a powerful tool. What percentage of the, sh the shoe art you've done, you think just sit on a shelf? Because they're collectors and they're like, we're just, we're just putting it up there. I would say at least half, like some yeah. people wear them. And I, and as I would say more than half now, um, half in the beginning, uh, just because like, I actually, I learned the art of firing clients. Mm. And so like, when I get people like hitting me up and I could tell that they just want to buy a shoe for, to wear on a Friday, I like, even if it's good money, I don't want to do it. Cause I, I just, I just learned that those are difficult clients to work mm. with. Um, because they don't understand the time, effort, and um, uh, actual like um, value of the shoe or, or the art, right? Uh, they just want to wear it so that they can like flex on their friends. And those are the people who are most likely to complain versus the people the people who fell in love with the process of how I got to where I am, where I am. And they literally just man, like one guy, he just bought a pair of Voorhees, which is the black, uh, the black Jason shoe that I started in my garage. He just bought yeah. Oh, um, he, so he paid about 400 bucks for him. Like it came in. Right. Um, I got a DM. He said, man, he said, I'm so excited about these. He said, I've been waiting to get one pair of these for four years, <laughs> for four years. He's wow. a, you know, like the guys that just like smack people. Like, I mean, like they, like they smack <laughs> each other until they knock each other off. He's one of those. So it's not a client that I want to make like you want to upset. Yeah. So like, I'm making sure that I'm taking my time on his, right. I'm not trying to have the guy come to Georgia and is like, just smack me. Right. But like, um, He's going to wear them out. He, uh, it's like a debut fight or match, and he's going to wear them out during the match. He's like, he said, man, thousands of people are going to see this. He said, I'm so excited to be wearing your product. He's like, I've been like one of these for like, he said like three or four years. And that set the little boy in me. Like it, mm. it, it, it spoke so deeply to the little boy in me. Mm. The little boy who was told there is no money in art. Right. And it's now that the little boy now has that perspective that like, one, there is money in art. But money was never even the best part. The best part is the value that people have in my craft. Mm. And like, even like in, not a, and didn't, I'll even go deeper than that. The best part is not even the craft. The best part is the fact that I am inspiring other artists. Yeah. To get a, to, to like step outside of their comfort zone. And like, I had people DM me like at least once or twice a week. Hey man, you inspired me to like create again. Wow. And that, that resonates with me. Oh, I can tell you stepping out and doing speak with people. When I get those kind of DMs and they're just like, you know, watching your videos and I finally just decided I need it. I'm like, okay, that you're right. There's just something so powerful about that when people, you know, because of something you did. Okay. Your social media went through the roof. Mm. I'm sure it brought trolls. I'm sure it brought haters. Oh, oh, like yeah. <laughs> walk us through. Yeah. Was it just like when you could probably when you first start experiencing it to like that level. You know, uh, it's it's probably like it feels so drastic at the time. Now you're like, yeah, I, I know how to navigate it, walk through it. But what was yeah. it like? I mean, how did you walk through I, it? I once heard that um, sharing something creatively is like mentally undressing in front of someone. <sighs> like like it, it, that is a, it's a different level of vulnerability to yep. take something out of here and then present it yep. out here. And then to have someone just trash it. Yeah. Right. With with an emoji, like like I, I took all this effort and you just give me an emoji. Like, yeah. Just trash, just trash. Yeah. And like and it never feels. I always say this. I've never been hated on any. I've never been hated by another person in motion. And, and like my slogan is like uh, stay in motion. You know, based mm. on Isaac Newton's uh, law, an object in motion stays in motion unless hindered by an outside force. So it's like that. That mindset is like just stay in motion, regardless yeah. of what's on the outside. Stay in motion. I have never been hated on by another person in motion. It's always by someone who does not like their current circumstances, mm. who has a dream that is buried beneath like misery, hate, or yep. inadequacy. And so as time goes on, you start to realize that's the pattern. Um, the problem is in a pattern. 
like like yeah. it's like that that's that's them like they like they can they can do it i have to keep in mind it's like okay they're hating on a minute clip yeah they haven't even seen the shoe they never bought the shoe yeah. and it's so easy i don't know why it is but like as humans like we it's so easy to pay attention to the one negative when you got oh. 10 other people who actually bought the shoe and yep. spent their hard-earned money yep. right and so like it's so easy to like focus on that and so i used to like fire back but then um you know what changed it for me is when Instagram started paying for reels. Oh. Like they started like paying creators for reels. And so, um, like I, it was, I had posted a shoe, I think in, I posted a picture in October or a reel in October and it went viral all the way through December. <laughs> well, these people were just like eating me up in the comments. I'm like, bro, this sucks. And then I opened up the, how much I was making and they paid for Christmas. <laughs> I was like, Oh, hey. <laughs> so they, they, are, they are keep it going. Lost. Yeah, like my silent supporters. And so it used to, you learn to troll the trolls, right? So it's like, how, how do you keep an idiot talking, right? You ask them questions. Yeah, like, and then like, and they get offended. Like, they just like, they get mad. It's like, man, like, oh, why why are you so pressed? Like, I'm not pressed. Like, well, like, well, tell me more. Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah. And, and, and they'll just keep commenting. And the more they comment, the more the Instagram, Instagram doesn't read, oh, this is, you know, they're hating on Chew Baker. We're not going right. to, no, they read, Hey, he's going back and forth with someone. This must be important. Let's share it to more people. Let's share it to more people <laughs> like this person who might not like the shoe. And yep. so all the while I'm just getting paid off this one video. And then after a while, like it would just get old and I would feel bad. Cause it was like, okay, I feel like I'm just taking advantage of them yeah. because like they, they clearly can't read, you know, like they, they just don't <laughs> get it. And so at the end, I'll just say like, I'll break it down to them or even sometimes um, because of like the community that I've built is the community I built, they, they're, they're a community of process and journey. They're not a community of product. I mean, I do have another community where they just want to buy things, but then there are people who like, they, they're creators. Hey, how, how do I get to where you're at? Well, how did you start? You know? And so I would literally screenshot conversations and like, and mm. then take those screenshots and put them in my story and just like do a story about, Hey, this person said this, that made yep. me really sick. And then I'll screenshot the money that it's making, like, but then they do it, like, you know, it'll be this whole funny thing. So we're laughing in the story and this person is pressed in the comments thinking that they're just eating me alive yeah. all the while. Like, and then at, towards the end of the uh, story, and I do that, I've done this multiple times, I'll actually tag the individual and I'll say, thank you. Mm. <laughs> like, thank you. Yeah. So I call, I call them my employees is what I call it. And that, that, that's when they stop responding. I say, they're employees I don't have to pay. I just have to talk to them. They just need someone to talk to. And so, yeah, like that's just how you handle that. Like you just don't, you, you don't tolerate it necessarily, but you realize that I'm above this. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, as I coach uh, speakers, especially when you get to, you know, if, you, if you're just kind of the everyday speaker, you know, I'm doing Zooms at work or I'm doing my own YouTube video. Uh, okay. That's one thing. But when people start paying you thousands of dollars to engage an audience, I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole different ballgame. And the awesome thing is I found 95% of the people in the audience will never step on stage and communicate Thanks. at that level. But Thanks. yeah, they'll, they'll pour on the critique. You should have done this. You should have done that. So when I walk communicators through, and I'm probably, it was probably the same with you. You got to look at it at a lens of like, okay, I'm going to size up their emotional intelligence, first of all. I mean, so you read the mm, comment and yeah. you're like, okay, they got no emotional intelligence. Yeah. You know, like, all right, I'm, I'm going to take it for this grain of, you know, salt. It may be mm. different if it was like a, you know, professional speaker or an art, you know. Um, and, and, and it never, you know. It, and it, like I said, like it never comes from a person in motion. Right. Like it's, it's always from like the critic. Like it's the guy sitting on the couch with a purple do-rag, right? Like it's just like. <laughs> like it, in his parents' basement. Comes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah. It's like that. That's exactly right, bro. Like it. It's the difference between a coach and a critique and a critic. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, a personality type uh, as an artist, are you, you know, I know for, for me, like I would, I would say I would put myself in the artist category. I am not, you know, when it comes to, I'm not an artist that way, painting, you know, those kind of things. But You're I am. Words. Yeah. When it comes to the. the I've seen the, you in motion, bro. Yeah. Speech craft, when it comes to storytelling. You know, and I've got to be inspired. Like, this is my studio, so this is kind of boring. But if you go over hey. to my office, there's pictures everywhere, and it's eclectic. You know, talk about your creative process. I mean, how do you get inspired to kind of keep going? Because, you know, especially in your 
your world, you, you've got to have the next product. You've got to have the next, you know, thing where people are like, I got to get my hands on that. I've learned to just create for me. Oh. And that's how it started. Cause let's think about it. Like when it came to cool life living, how did it start? I, I was, I was in a screen printing class and I made a shirt to say cool life living and people loved it. And yep. so I sold it. Right. <laughs> I, like when it came to the Voorhees. One. Yep. Yeah. Like the Voorhees, like how did that start? I was in my garage. I made a size 12 black Air Force One look like Jason with blood splatter. People loved it and it went viral. And so I, there was a point where I lost that because like, it, and, and actually, it, actually now I'm thinking about it, the days that I stopped dreaming is because I was dreaming for other people. <sighs> like that, like that, 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 that's, that was the problem is that I would reach this point where I'm dreaming for someone else. I'm, I'm trying to impress someone else. Right. Versus, man, what do I want to create today? Goodness gracious. That's powerful. Yeah. Like, well, what do I want to create today? Right. Like, and, wow. like, and even now it's like, I have all these projects on my plate and like, and I, I, I carve out time to just simply wow. create, e even if that creation is a failure, bro. Like, yep. that, yeah, creation like that. This is mine. No one else has that. There's another one. Oh, that one back there. This is, a, um, that, oh, these are sweet. <laughs> Bro, okay, so what I love about this shoe, and I have yet to wear it. One, I don't know if you can tell, it's over here. One, right here, like, yeah. You see the Joker faces? I made these stickers back when I was selling stuff on Etsy. So I have like <laughs> a whole wad of them, right? And so this is actually acrylic, I'm not acrylic, but resin uh, that I made uh, out of a bat, I made a bat symbol out of resin. Wow. Right? And so I was just playing around with the shoe. This is like the Batman's arm thing right here. Now the stickers, I was just toying around. Right. And I was like, man, like, well, I really like that design. I'm going to try to put the sticker on. I had a heat gun and I melted the sticker on the Batman symbol. Bro, yeah. this is amazing. Wow. Like, like this is people have tried to buy this design for me. I don't want to make it because like I enjoy making it. But like, yeah. like the, the ideas, the best ideas come from like when you're when you're creating for you, even like now that I'm in like childhood development, like as far as like like teaching studies show that they like in it, it's uh, it's like a uh, like. You want to create autonomy in your classroom. So you want to create a safe place where no matter what they do, they can run, jump, play, get into stuff. They might make a mess. And it's the same thing with parenting. Like when you have a baby, like just put the baby on the floor. Like you mm. don't need all these toys. Just put the baby on the floor and just watch the baby. Yep. The baby's going to crawl. It's going to get into stuff. As long as the environment is safe, you give the child autonomy. Mm. The reason you want to do that is because like you learn better when you do it yourself. So like, so, so if, if I am interested in a thing, I'm going to learn about a thing versus, Hey guys, today we're going to be learning how to like, blah, 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 you know, like do whatever. Yeah. I'm not necessarily interested in that. Right. And so that same principle, this goes back to like navigating, like back to childlike wonder is as adults, like, are you carving out time for yourself to just simply be <sighs> like, like, or do you know, you know, what, what did you do to, what did you do for yourself today? Yep. Like the, what did you read that you wanted to read? Not because you had to read it in order to do, do this. Like, what, what did you create today that you wanted to create? What did you draw that you wanted to draw? What did you write that you wanted to write? Yeah. Right. And when you do that, you learn that like the the uh, the amount of information that you retain from doing that is so much more powerful. I have so many shoes wow. on this wall. Every single one of them started out as a mistake. Mm. Like they're burner shoes, but I learned something from it, and then I kept going because I learned from it. And so like that, that creating a space for autonomy, and that's hard for some people because a lot of people need structure. I'm super ADHD. I love autonomy. You know, like, I, yeah. you know, like I love like we, bro, we could be on a power right now. And someone says, Hey, let's go skydiving, bro. I'm so down right wow. now. I'm yeah. like, that is awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. so like, but like that, that level of like childlike wonder. And I think that every adult needs to possess that or like, or to navigate towards yep. it, but far too many adults are too busy being adults. Yeah. And they lose it. Yeah. That's so, so good. So how do you so stay inspired? Powerful. Great for you. Yeah. Do, 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 you know, carve out a couple of hours a day or an, a couple of hours a week or yeah. a day in the week to just like, what do I want to do today? Yep. And watch where it takes you. Yep. Oh, I love that. Brother, I'm telling you what, this conversation has blessed my life so much. You have provided me with a page full of notes and incredible, <laughs> I mean, just incredible in incredible wisdom. I mean, it's just incredible. So as we kind of, as we kind of steer the scent, cause I could keep talking to you for hours. Like this is, we're going to have to do a part two of this conversation or a whole That'd other awesome, topic bro. at some point, because this is so good. 
Let me ask you, we're creating this library, this online library uh, for leaders to go to. It's just simply a Google spreadsheet, but it's just filled with all the best of the best from all of our podcast guests and all the resources that we've found for leaders to invest in their communication and their um, leadership skills. So when it comes to a speaker, is there somebody that you listen to that's like, oh my goodness, every time, fill me up, you know, love how they communicate, connect with me. Is there someone that comes to mind? Uh, as far as speakers, um, there's this guy called Tim Ross. Now, it, like, this is like yeah. a, uh, like, he's he's a really good communicator. And the reason I find him very interesting is because he's he's at a, like, crazy level of authenticity. Oh, where, like, yeah. He, he's in, it, do you know who Tim Ross is? Okay, oh, yeah, I, they, like, I just for sure do. Bro. Yeah, like, and it's just like, <laughs> and he says what he says and he means what he means. And, like, and I love that level, yep. like, of just communication because it's like, even if he said the wrong thing, he'll double back in the, and then recommunicate, right? Or, or apologize, right? But it's very rare that he, like he says the wrong thing because he pauses. Yep. You pay attention to how he talks. Like, like yep. the, not many people, some people are very quick to talk, very quick yeah. to speak. Like, yeah. especially as men, like we're very quick to speak. Yep. No, shut up. Yep. Pause. Let, let, people, let people wait for what you have to say. Yeah. And when people have to wait for what you have to say, they respect what you have to say. Yep. Because you took time and you thought about it and he pauses and then he speaks. Yeah. And a lot of stuff that comes out of his mouth is very controversial because it doesn't align with the North American church. Yeah. But it's some, yeah. some of this, a lot of stuff that he says needs to be said, mm, yeah. you know, like, and, and, and some people may agree with that. Some people may disagree, but remember, you never want to create a shoe that everybody wants. Yeah. You want to create a shoe that half of the people love and half of the people hate. Mm. Controversy is a great marketing tool. Mm. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. Uh, a podcast. Podcast or YouTube channel, whether it's guilty pleasure or, you know, learning development, is there just something that you keep going back to? You'd recommend to somebody, you know, you'd say, oh, it's so good. You're going to learn a ton. Uh well so I'm 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 really big into child, early childhood development so um yeah. one book I'm reading is the whole brain child yeah um like I, I just keep revisiting that book uh, and the reason is that like I I think that any it, it, everybody needs to read it honestly mm -hmm. uh the reason being is that like in every man is a little boy and every woman is a little girl mm -hmm. and that the more you learn how to nurture a child you learn how to heal the child in you and so that, that that's a book the uh the whole brain child is it really great book um man i'll say a, a book another book that i'm like that, that i revisit that i name my son after thanks to you is in a pit with a lion on a snowy day <laughs> if you have a if you have a hard time like making decisions or like or chasing that dream read that book that's all i yeah. gotta say oh, i love I, lion on the I, snowy day Man, it was such a blast giving you that book and oh, just bro, and then, bless me. And yeah, then yeah. talking to you afterwards because it did the same and it just ignited me. I'm like, bro, yes, oh, this was a word that I needed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I love and it. And as oh, far as podcasts, like, yeah. I, I would, so, okay, I'm the type of person that like I find the song and I will listen to that song on repeat like over and over and over for like a solid month. So like, yep. I'm not the best person to ask about a podcast. Um, but like, I do need to like listen to more, but during my commutes, I'm where I listen to audio books. Mm. And so the, um, if I went through the list, like my, my, my audio book selection is very eclectic. Like I learn, I love learning about different cultures. Mm. Um, I learn, love learning about communication. Uh, crucial conversations is a really mm. great book. Crucial conversations. Um, it looks like a boring book based on a cover, but like, it's, it's like having coffee with the author. Um, wow. really great book. Um, and so like the, the three that I listed have been the most like revolutionary as far as like my life, but yeah, just learning about childhood development, heal the inner child. Um, as far as communication, like I, I was, I'm a much better communication because of the relationships that I've experienced, but then mm. also that book, it taught me that I was, I was, I'm assertive. Yeah. Um, but it taught me, um, not to try to win the argument, but yeah. to win the person. Uh, right. And then right. how you do that based on your communication style. Yep. Oh, well, my friend, this has been such a powerful conversation. Bro, I know I'm looking forward people. to this, man. <laughs> tell us where, what's the best place people can find you online. 
Uh, best place to find me online. Do not shoot me an email. Send me an email, but it's very hard for me. Like I just don't check emails. I'm I'm a millennial. <laughs> like we're we're not good at that. Uh, so I will say Instagram. So you can yeah. even go to my personal Instagram at i underscore c s e e underscore motion. Um, but then my uh, Shoebaker Instagram, I'm checking that daily. Um, would be Shoebaker underscore ATL. And so, like I said, I'm millennial. The social media is the new email. <laughs> I love it. And we'll link to all that in the show notes. We'll put it in the Speak With People community Facebook group. And oh. you've inspired me. I'm going to save up. I would love to get a pair of, you know, shoes with Speak With You know, let you do your, your magic to the Speak That'd With People logo. Oh, it would be awesome. That'd be sick, bro. It would be awesome. Hey, just let me know, bro. Let me know the size when I got you. Oh, brother. Uh, all right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us on another episode of the Speak With People podcast. We hope that you were encouraged. We hope that you were inspired and challenged to improve your communication skills. I want to thank you again for being a part of the Speak With People podcast community. Make sure you don't miss out on being a part of the Speak With People Facebook community group. Just head to Facebook, type in Speak With People, scroll down and join our community because every single day, we're encouraging each other. We're helping each other to improve our communication skills. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next episode.